friends. So we are the fourth day, second session. So so far we have seen the design aspects, modeling aspects, and software, and some case studies from the doctors. And of course, the hands-on and the processing of the medical image uh, data. And now we are going to have a metal tissue manufacturing in healthcare. So it uh, covers the medical, the material aspects as well, the metal aim in, in particular. We, we have now the speaker and uh, my colleague and the, the coordinator of this FTP, Dr. Manjaya. So he is the assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at uh, NIT Warangal and also the coordinator as I mentioned. And coming to his uh, education, so he did MTech from uh, BDT College of Engineering in, in the Specialization Production Engineering Systems Technology in 2011, and PhD from NIT K Suratkal 2015, and postdoctoral from University of uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, and Ecole Centrale Dynastie, that is from France. He has been working in additive manufacturing for eight years. He has published more than 35 research papers in international journals and conferences, and seven book chapters, and recently published one reference book in additive manufacturing in Elsevier Publisher. His research interest includes additive manufacturing, surface engineering, statistical optimization, and advanced manufacturing processes. And he has received Elsevier Outstanding Reviewer Award, March 2018. And you are going to uh, hear from him, that is on the metal 3D printing in healthcare. It is over to you, Dr. Manjagar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your nice introduction about me, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Is it my screen is visible, sir? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very good afternoon to all the participants and my dear colleagues, sir. Uh, since till now we have uh, discussed with respect to the the IT manufacturing process and what all we have worked regarding this uh, the bioprinting, especially biomedical applications as uh, Dr. Aditya Mohan sir and as well as today's uh, morning session, Dr. Reddy sir has discussed the what specific, the customized implants are required in particularly the patients, the trauma patients or cancer patients or some other, the diseased patients and all, where we required the aspects of this uh, and also how to helpful this 3D printing for the practitioners as the PG uh, medical scholars and as well as the the, the doctors, the compared to the experienced doctors, how they will get the experience with the help of this uh, the 3D printed uh, the the human anatomy parts, and then they get the experience to make the real time the experience to implement the the implants in the patients. That is the major uh, motto of this uh, the 3D printing in medical aspects. And in my session, I am going to uh, give a overview of this metal 3D printing for especially for the uh, biomedical healthcare applications and all. 
if you see here uh, you have just put a two photographs here one is the implant screw and one other one is the where the spinal uh, there is a variations in the spinal rotator they are putting some of the the wires and as well as the screw nut alignments this is just a simple examples where we are using the 3d printed metal 3d printed the parts or applications for the uh, biomedical applications in the today's scenario we are talking about the 3d printing is uh, growing very lot and rapid uh, growth rate is there if you compare with the market size in the global healthcare ready manufacturing market size the in 2020 2020 there was a usd 1.3 billion in the market size is there but if you see in the 2021 the market rate is growing every year 21 percent the growth rate is increasing because the need of customized medical products as a implants or any other kind of the, the medical parts because of the complex design are growing uh, every year that's why we need to have the the growth in the medical parts which are required which are manufactured or printed by the metal 3d printer and uh, coming to the my talk i am going to uh, deliver or uh, discuss on these aspects what is biomaterials and as well as how we can able to manufacture the, the conventional manufacturing methods with respect to the biomedical application parts and all. then i will give the a brief very a brief overview of this metal 3d printing because in our earlier uh, first uh, sessions with respect to the a preliminary of 3d printing and design activity we have discussed all the the aspects of metal 3d printing and how it can be used for aerospace medical and other aspects and all and also i'm going to give the uh, medical the market scenario of this medical implants since from 2060 to 2028 how it was the expecting uh, what is the the market size and the, the usd millions like with respect to all the real printing process and then we are going to give the healthcare applications what are the the medical parts or the medical applications required which are printed by this 3d printing and some of the case studies and then challenges with respect to the uh, 3d printing medical parts and then summarizing the overview of this the, the metal 3d printing for healthcare applications and all. if you see the 3d printing what we are uh, telling it is gaining a lot of attention over uh, past decades in both as well as in academia and as well as in industry aspects because the it's very advantageous like when we talk about the customization it is very much useful and advantageous for the fabrication of this customized parts even at low manufacturing cost even because there is a unpretendable the capability of the complexity geometry can be developed by this three printing even in the short period of time by taking the CT scan or MRI data, we can able to develop or fabricate the customized parts in a, a short period of time at even low manufacturing cost. That's why the 3D printing is uh, received a great attention over a past decades in the uh, medical aspects. And when you come to the uh, metal, uh, 3D printing of metal with very controllable structures, represents the state of the art of the technology because wherever we need in the biomedical aspects the porous structures are required the another thing the customized the very patient specific customized implants are required and the another aspect is it should be a low manufacturing cost and it should be a manufactured with a short fabrication period that is what required in the the metal aspects that can be made with this 3d printing and all and with respect to the development of these metallic implants for the uh, biomedical applications, what are biomaterials? When you talk of these biomaterials, what are these biomaterials? The biomaterials are the substances that has been engineered to the interact with the biological system for a medical purpose. In these biomaterials, we categorize like the synthetic biomaterials, that is the synthetic biomedical and as well as biological biomaterials. 
in the synthetic what we are talking about this the since from the first session first day of this uh, ftp program the polymers and the ceramics as at why commerce are given a, a lot of opportunity of this uh, the polymers and ceramics how it can be used to make the medical application parts and all the polyamides polyesters polyhydrates and as well as some of the ceramics cl2 o3 zirconium oxide titanium oxide drugs hepatite even in the today's morning session uh, sir has given many opportunity how the hydroxy hepatite is growing to make the the artificial the bone and all how the hydroxy hepatite is useful when you are using a, a, a gelatin and as well as the making the hydroxy hepatite with the, incorporating the some of the stem cells of the human and developing this the artificial the bones and all that is where we are very much development or advancement taking place in this Uh, development of this artificial bones and all and with respect to the metals you are aware that the titanium and its alloys are very much highly biocompatible materials because of its nature one is the elastic modulus strength and as well as how much it is biocompatible with respect to the other materials because of the less corrosion resistance like the it is when it is uh, the implanted in the human uh, the when it is reacting with any other chemical environmental conditions are highly resistance with respect to any other materials and as well as you know that the chromium cobalt stainless steel materials these are also the biocompatible materials when it comes to the metals and alloys and the other biological materials that is the organic compounds from the biological like the collagen silk or stone or the organic these are all when we are talking about this the 4d printing or the the bio printing some of the researchers the mit or some the oxford universities they are developing some of the the man made the artificial organs in these aspects are some of the liver kidney these kind of the functional the artificial organs are manufactured with the help of this collagen or gelatin kind of this uh, organic compounds of this uh, bio materials and, and uh, when we are talking about this uh, with respect to the medical the metals and alloys which are made by this 3d printing process why the bio materials are very much important means the bio materials are which are used for the structural applications in the field of medicines are called bio materials because the such materials are used to replace the damaged or the diseased body parts in a human or any animal bodies because no other materials can be used for the replacement of the damaged or diseased parts in the human because it cannot it should have the life certainty like what is the life span of the compound the materials which you are using and should to be highly biocompatible that is what required in the medical aspects and the only possible way to manufacture with a certain the requirement for the biomedical aspects only with the capability of the 3d printing process even earlier till today we are using some of the convention manufacturing methods to replace some of the damaged parts of the human or the animal bodies either the fractured bone or the implants or the hip implants knee implant or prosthesis or the dental implants all these are all even till today we are manufacturing with conventional manufacturing methods as we know that the apport metallurgy methods will be there the machining methods or the laser machining methods or some of the uh, casting investment casting methods these are all we are using for making some of the uh, the implants with the conventional manufacturing methods means and this is the uh, possible because of the mechanical physical and chemical properties of biomaterials are very much compatible to the the host body of the human like the biomaterials are very much suitable or compatible with the human body when come across with the cell growth or bacterial growth or the fixation with respect to the bone it is very much biocompatible that's why the biomaterials are required those biomaterials can be made with this kind of the it manufacturing that is the 3d printing process if you consider the 
account for this uh, the biomaterials or a uh, uh, aged people like when you take care of uh, the 65 years old people all over the world they are facing the same healthcare complications all these senior people who are the age of 65 plus are facing some of the healthcare complications like the bone fracture or tissue loss or some other the failure because of the trauma or because of the cancer if you come across all this uh, the healthcare issues about the senior aged people that is in the world around 10% of the world population people are facing with these kind of healthcare issues means to solve these complications or address these issues we need to have the reconstruction or fixation of the the replacements of this the implants or the the failures or whatever the fractured bone or some of the implants because of that the we need to have the demand of this the metal parts or the metal implants that going to support and enable the immediate mobilization of the patients and as well as the prevent some of the development of the further complications in the medical aspects that's why we need to have the uh, kind of biometers that can be made with this the it manufacturing process and even till today there are so many clinical uh, trials have been made with respect to these kind of implants which are made by this thread printing process around 70 to 80 percent clinically used implants made by the stainless steel cobalt chromium alloys uh, titanium alloys and nitinol what we are talking about the shape memorialize and some of the cases tantalum and niobium alloys are also used and also the clinically tested with the fda approach and all these kind of materials even with the advancement of this 3d printing technology we are using these kind of metals and alloys to make the required patient specific the customized the parts and also as well as the some of the studies are biodegradable metals including this magnesium iron zinc and as well as calcium many new findings are come across with these kind of the uh, the biodegradable materials over the last decade the these developments are taking place in the kind of the biomaterials when you are talking about the biomaterials what kind of biomechanisms means when you are developing the implants by the conventional manufacturing methods or the 3d printing methods what kind of the biomechanisms means the implants are used for improvement in the quality of the life producing by new materials the implant materials react with tissues in different ways depending on the material type see if the tissues or the bacteria or the cells how fast it is growing how much time it is taking to compatible with the human body whether a one week or two week or three week or three months how much time duration it is required to be compatible with the human body that is highly depends upon the material type which you are using or replacing with the, the fractured part or the fractured component of the implant <laughs> thus the tissue attachment mechanism is also depends on the response of the tissue with respect to the implant surface means what roughnesses what surface properties are required with respect to the biomaterials which are manufactured by this 3d printing process in general the one can classify this mechanism as the inert and as well as biact the inert materials such as the titanium alumina are nearly chemically inert in the body and show minimal chemical reactions with adjacent tissues even uh, recently some of the researchers they have uh, shown uh, even titanium has some chemically interaction with the human uh, the environmental conditions but uh, as you see that uh, the reactions are very minute that is not much causing any uh, reaction with respect to the human body that's why it's very minimal and all. the other the bioactive materials like uh, such as glass ceramics uh, contains the oxides of silicon and sodium and calcium these forms the chemical bonds between the living bone leading to the strong mechanical implant bone bond this is what the kind of the bioactive materials and as well as the biodegradable materials as i told the magnesium calcium 
the zinc and iron there are these kind of the new 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 findings has been reported over this last decades and all with respect to the uh, biometallic uh, the bio materials what kind of metallic materials the metallic materials are the engineered system designed to provide internal support to the biological tissues or the fractured bones or the uh, the what we are talking the fibula bone or any kind of the fractured the kind of the parts in the human body the metallic uh, biomaterials are exploited due to their the inertness and as well as the structural functions they do not possess any uh, bio functionalities like the blood compatibility bone conductivity or bioactivity the surface modifications are required once the the implants are manufactured with a conventional process or with the metal 3d printing process and all lane first introduced this the metal plate for bone fracture fixation in 1895 is with the help of the stainless steel material 316 stainless steel material they are introduced when the bone is fractured that can be fixed with this kind of the metal plates of stainless steel materials if you see here the what kind of the metal types and as well as the alloy types which can be used for the required applications whether the different kind of implants in the particular applications and all if you see in this uh, the table biomedical application and the type of metals are the alloys used for a particular applications if you see here the stainless steel materials chromium cobalt or titanium are used for the stents and artificial valves in the cardiovascular applications in the art surgery and art the stents and all made with this even with the shape memorialized nitnal we are made with the, this kind of stents and all wherever we required the cardiovascular the problems to address those kind of applications and as well as the uh, the other uh, stainless steel the pure titanium and uh, chromium cobalt as well as the titanium with uh, uh, six aluminum and seven niobium uh, these kind of the beta titanium alloys also used in the, the bone fixation that is what we are talking about the plates the where the bone fracture the plate can be used introduced between the fractured bones and all and with the help of this these screws or the pins or the artificial joints are made with these kind of materials where we need the orthopedic applications and all as we already sir discussed so many orthopedic issues would be there even by born birth or by physically handicapped patients or with the other kind of trauma patients we need to have these kind of the addressing these orthopedic issues which can be made by these kind of materials the like stainless steel titanium chromium cobalt materials and all with the help of these materials can be addressed these kind of the patient specific problems and all and the other uh, the applications like the orthodontic wise means to adjust the the teeth some people having a the aesthetic appearance or poor to address those kind of issues which can be made with nitinol the orthodontic wires or the filings or with the titanium molybdenum or with some of the gold crowns are implanted in the patient specific these kind of the orthodontic dentistry applications can be addressed with these materials and all and with respect to the particularly plate and screws are addressed by this wherever we need to have a corneal facial aspects in that chromium cobalt titanium stainless steel and as well as the titanium alloys are used wherever we need to have the uh, the plates and screws and all and the other aspects uh, the 316 stainless steel is particularly used in the artificial eardrum like in the eardrum the artificial eardrum is made with this uh, stainless steel materials where the ontological applications and all these kind of uh, metallic biomaterials are used in the particular applications with respect to the what kind of implants are made wherever we required to make some The implants or screws or the plates or the stents can be made with the particular materials for particular applications and all. And what we are talking about the different kind of metals and as well as materials and alloys. These kind of metals are we are telling about. These are all the biomaterials. How do we say these materials are biomaterials? What kind of properties are required with respect to the these biomaterials? means the materials 
whatever we are talking about the biomaterials, the mechanical properties of these biomaterials, such as the fracture toughness or the strength, and as well as the compressive strength, the elastic modulus, are all taken into consideration while processing as the biomaterials. Because when we talk about the bone, the human bone, even the biocompatible material should mimic or replace the kind of the biomaterials or the human bone. It should be at least very near or similar to the, the bone properties. That is what we are talking about the biomaterials. And these biomaterials should be hard and as well as flexible. They do not react with any tissues in the body of the human. And also they must be non-toxic to the body. They must be non-toxic to the human body. And these biomaterials has a similar deformable, deformable properties with materials it is going to be replaced with the human parts or the organs or some of the kind of the fractured places. These biomaterials are hardness is desirable as equal to the bone hardness. Whatever the human bone hardness is required, that materials also should be having same kind of hardness properties as well as the elastic modulus properties. And they have a higher fracture toughness as kind of this bone material properties. These are all the properties are required in the biomaterials. Then only these materials can be used to replace the, the human uh, the implants. It can be replaced with these kind of the, the existing uh, all the period fractured parts in the human body. You can see in this the metals in medical applications. Some of the application examples are shown here. You can see the knee implant as well as the, the spinal vertebrae to adjust the spinal if it is fractured or if it is uh, tilted that can be adjusted with these kind of the clamping and with the screws of the study. Uh, with respect to these can be manufactured with the advanced manufacturing technology of this 3d printing uh, even compared with the conventional manufacturing methods because we are having a, a digital control and we are can able to manufacture very customized uh, parts and uh, with the help of this uh, the metal 3d printing applications and this is uh, gradually adapted in even almost all the industrial sector and this is going to trigger the revolutions of this manufacturing process. Even till today, the widely applied in this biomedical field, not only in the repair of the human tissues and all, even like orthopedic, dental application, even the, the cardiovascular stents and all, or some of the microbic devices, all, even in the medical electronics uh, can be made with these kind of the metals with the 3D printing process and all. And if you see here in the healthcare applications where majorly we are using the metals and alloys for a particular applications in the human body. If you see here the cranial processes where the some head injury or the trauma patients met with the accident and failed the, the skull or some fracture happen because of the, the cancer or some of the diseases that can be replaced with a, a cranial process made by this uh, IT manufacturing of a metal IT manufacturing process. And with the surgical guides, for example, some of the implants, the dental implants or crowns or the arches, these kind of the, the parts are made by the surgical uh, requirement, even surgical guides can be made with this medical metal printing process with the required biomaterials and all. And as well as the scapular processes uh, where we are having some of the patients uh, problem with the, the hand uh, where uh, rib and chest uh, broken because of the accident that can be scapular uh, processes uh, that can be made with this uh, the metal like chromium cobalt or titanium molecular and, and even with the knee processes for majority of the patients are 
facing the knee prosthesis problems and all the knee fracture or the worn out of the bone there we need to have a lot of replacement of this knee implants are required in the worldwide total today and as well as in the uh, medical applications like the dental implants the the interbody fusion cage and as well as uh, the, the hip implant cups that is the octavular cup the octavular cup is majorly utilized in uh, most of the caged patients where we are having a fracture of these hips and all and as well as the hip prosthesis these are all the major uh, the medical applications of biomedical healthcare applications used by this metallic or alloy materials and all and even nowadays if you see the the corona patients like the patients are suffering with black fungus and all they are having some uh, cranial uh, issues are there like uh, the patients uh, the nose bone are uh, eaten by this the black fungus and all these uh, issues can be addressed with the uh, uh, metallic biomaterials that can be made with this uh, medical 3d printing process with the availability of the process and all so these are all other kind of the implants like the ankle implants uh, are made with this uh, titanium matrix with the SLM process or EBM process and all. This is the another kind of the, the biomedical parts are made by this uh, 3D printing process and all. Even today, the biomedical field is a uh, lot of growing and uh, if you cannot use uh, the proper materials, there will be a mismatch in the mechanical properties with respect to the uh, metallic implants and as well as bone. That is going to prone for the further failure or the leading to the consequences of the patients. Uh, this all has to be taken care during the implant uh, fixation in the particular patients and all. That's why the new methods, uh, the developments that should uh, biomimic the materials or properties of the bones, there we need to address the complex issues with respect to the particular patients that can be made with the 3D printing process and all. Even earlier, this was addressed by the conventional casting, powder metallurgy methods and all. Uh, with that, uh, we cannot able to address so many uh, the difficulties when you are uh, implanting because of the failure of the implants and the restoration parts are some of the prone for the because of the stress shielding and all. That's why these things can be addressed addressed by this repeating process it is the possible to print the metallic implants with the controlled porosity even with the modulus matching closely to the native bone of the human thereby reducing the problems that is caused by the stress shielding or the the implant fi failure fixation that can be addressed by this uh, 3d printing metallic 3d printing applications and all and even the mass production of this metallic implants is also enabled by this uh, 3d printing process because of the the benefits and as well as the low cost of manufacturing and as well as the short manufacturing time and as well as the reputability the high reputability is there in this uh, ready manufactured metallic parts and all that's why it is more uh, the integrated with this uh, computer aided design data techniques which uh, customized model design taken from the CT scanning or MRI scanning which is having a high degree of uh, freedom to design what actually the patient uh, requirement is there that can be made with this kind of the availability of 3D printing uh, the process and all. That is the major advancement is taking place in this uh, 3D printing with respect to the uh, medicine or in the uh, biomedical aspects. Even uh, nowadays the, uh, made by these uh, tissues or organs so with some of the specific materials that custom uh, the metallic implants that can uh, fit the tissues or with the defects uh, that kind of the significant effort have been made by a lot of researchers to develop such kind of implants which are very closely related to the native bone structures or the functional properties that kind of the development is taking place in the case of the uh, metals and alloys in the case of the 3d printing process and all you see the some of the examples here where the the, the crystal structure and the strong bonding uh, the metallic bonds in the arthritic applications like the material joint prosthesis and the bone uh, renewal wherever we need to have this kind of the hip implants failures in such kind we are replacing with some of the uh, titanium materials and that should be highly uh, uh, strong metallic bonding should be there in the orthopedic applications even in the the face and jaw surgery and all 
uh, with the uh, available data of this uh, MRI scanning that can be re-edited or uh, uh, edited with the uh, materialized mimic software or with the available uh, the NetFab software that, uh, that can be data used, edited and that can be used for printing with the uh, 3D systems and all. And even with the cardiovascular surgery, that is the artificial art valves and all. This can be uh, printed with this 3D printing process and all. This is where we need to have the utilization of 3D printing technology for the new implications uh, and to address the emerging uh, issues with the biomedical applications and all. When you are talking about this, uh, all these medical applications, the biomedical applications, how we are addressing uh, till today with respect to the conventional manufacturing methods. If you talk about the conventional manufacturing methods, for example, uh, the coronary stents, uh, these stents are made by these uh, nitinol materials or the titanium nickel materials with the help of the machining process. That is, if you see here, the laser machining are used to make such kind of the laser micro machining are used to make such kind of the stents. And a, a tube of uh, new nitinol materials are used with the help of the laser cutting made with the required kind of the stent uh, with the properties of its uh, materials uh, with the nitinol materials. That is where the involves the, uh, the material removal process with the uh, cutting tool or the machining uh, with the help of this laser cutting and all. There we are uh, considerably cost effective and it is a uh, user friendly also, but uh, it can also use to improve the uh, surface finish or uh, the finished product. And this method is highly recommended for the manufacturing of implants even the components with the simple designs and under the laser machining process that is the conventional laser machining and as well as uh, that can be replaced by this uh, CNC machining methods and all. And uh, it has ability to modify the even the surface structure of this polymer components with the micro scale surface textures and all. The availability of this uh, laser finishing process and all. And the other uh, aspects what we are telling the the stents, these kind of stents uh, are the applications of this nitinol materials in the cardiovascular uh, problems to address these kind of applications. The shape of marinized nitinol stents are made from this uh, wire uh, before insertion into the blood vessels, uh, into the flattened wire. After the stents are inserted into the vein, into the action with the body temperature needed to open the blockage of the, the human blood vessels and all that. Uh, the arteries is clogged vessels is to the original shape to provide an onset and all. these kind of the issues can be addressed by this uh, shape of device that can be made with this uh, uh, laser machining process till today we are addressing but these kind of stents can be prepared with this uh, the select laser melting process or the electron beam melting process these kind of the metal rate manufacturing process can be used to address the uh, art cardiovascular problems in the patients and all. And the other the applications of this, uh, the nickel titanium alloys means uh, these alloys are have a property of this transformation from original shape to the uh, another shape. That is when it is uh, heat uh, decomposes like uh, these kind of materials are like a, uh, the phase transformation materials means from one phase arsenide to martensite it is varying because of the uh, temperature. That is why where we need to have the stents or the implants, knee implants, in such kind of the uh, shape memory properties, phase changing properties required. That is where the major play or major role of this uh, shape memory in the particular biomedical application. Even some biomaterials applications where the shape memory effect is required, the dental bridges, what I was telling the arts, the dental wires, na, to adjust the teeth, the dental bridges, and as well as the connection of these blood vessels in the skull, and even it can be listed as a, a muzzle or orthopedic uh, processes to artificial art and all. In such cases, even the before the patients having a problem with this, uh, the the knee implant, knee failure or the knee fractured parts and all, and that can be replaced with these kind of the parts or metal implants manufactured with this art manufacturing process and all. And with other conventional manufacturing methods like this. Uh, machining the, with the help of this fire axis CNC machining or with the incremental sheet farming process uh, like there is the one of the conventional old methods like uh, even with the uh, spinning or flow farming methods shear farming methods can be used to make such kind of the uh, simple uh, applications with the uh, conventional manufacturing methods and the other uh, the methods are the powder metallurgy process 
this powder metallurgy process is used to uh, form the uh, metal parts by performing the heating and compaction for the required porosities. This metal uh, powder metallurgy process is efficient to make the required porosity of the parts by blowing and by melting the, uh, sinting the powders of the required components and all. This powder metallurgy manufacturing of metallic implants is associated with the uh, elements and alloys of the powders exhibiting irregular shapes and as well as the as spherical shapes with the desired particle sizes and all. Even the purity of these uh, starting metals is particularly important in the powder manufacturing process and all, like the, especially in the uh, nickel titanium based alloys, it is more complicated uh, than the powder manufacturing of this uh, steel because ma manufacturing of these kind of the shape mineral like powders is highly difficult or uh, uh, challenging when you are going with the automation process and all. That's why you need to be taken care of addressing the the chemical properties of the shape and sizes of the powders which are manufactured by this automation of the especially in the highly oxidizing materials and all because it is highly sensitive to oxygen and formation of the contamination of the carbon or oxygen or the failure for the manufacturing use such kind of powders in the medical is highly prohibited that's why uh, the manufacturing process is very much important see in the metallurgical uh, powder metallurgy process the injection molding process like the this kind of powder injection may be used to make this kind of the injection molded parts these are all the the final uh, the bone plates which are uh, made by this powder metallurgy process where we need to have the a lot of production rates are required in the metal parts these kind of this uh, parts are made by using the powder metallurgy process now, this is very a simple uh, the bone plates that can be made with the conventional manufacturing methods and all and with respect to the so many challenges where we are talking about the customization or the patient specific these things need to be addressed by the uh, additive manufacturing process as we are all aware that the additive manufacturing uh, refers to the set of production of the technology supplied for the transformation of 3d digital data model into a 3d physical object through the successive layer of by layer deposition as we know that the ASTM or ISO standard, we categorize the same process into seven categories. The photopolymerization, material jetting, material extrusion, binder jetting, sheet lamination, and the direct energy deposition process. As well as the, these, uh, the seven categories, powder bed fusion, and as well as the direct energy deposition are the most leading uh, the metallic edge manufacturing process. It is a very competitive in the case of the mm -hmm. small scale production for the uh, drugs, uh, which is required for the dosage modification, even the complex geometries, patient specific compounds. All these can be made with these kind of the uh, powder bed fusion technologies and as well as the EBM technologies of the site manufacturing process. And very much advantages for a, a patient's need as well as she's achieving the a tailored uh, drug release profiles uh, that cannot be easily obtained through any conventional manufacturing process and uh, that can be addressed with the um, the metallic 3d printing process and all uh, and these uh, the it manufacturing can also be used to produce the the patient specific uh, the medical devices like the the uh, the operation tools are some of the allowing into products to tailor the specifically for the uh, patients realized at a very low cost and all that can be made with this kind of the 3d printing process and all even if you see the, with respect to the uh, metallic it manufacturing process as we are taking of uh, uh, the metal 3d printing techniques for biomedical applications and these the customized medical implants that meet the uh, specific individual needs of a patient uh, becoming uh, clinical applications for a particular patient and all for example the adapting of these 3d printing for the uh, production of a patient specific or uh, even accurate with the uh, mass production of uh, the anatomic models that can be achieved even in the orthopedic surgeons uh, for their operation preparations and all that is what the guiding for the PG students and all these kind of applications can be made with this uh, metal therapy printing techniques for the biomedical applications that is where you can see especially in these seven categories the select laser melting process and as well as electron beam melting process are highly uh, the beneficial and highly suitable to make the uh, parts are made by this the metal manufacturing process if you see so far the 
powered by fusion techniques and as well as the selective laser melting techniques and the electron beam melting are used for the fabrication of the customized metal implants means uh, since from uh, yesterday we are talking about this uh, equation specific implants as uh, dr aditya and as well as dr reddy sir has discussed the patient specific what are the failures of the bone or the particular trauma patients because of the accidents or the cancer patients where the uh, bone are loss because of the uh, diseases and all uh, that can be addressed by taking the mri or the ct scanning data that is a uh, design can be edited with the help of this netfab or with the mimic software and all and those things can be printed only with the uh, select laser melting or the cbm melting process even the uh, striker company as well as the incredible 3d company and other major leading the retinal manufacture metal uh, the medical aspects parts are made by this uh, the ebm and as well as the selam process and all what is the uh, the major advantages uh, the disadvantages of this uh, selam and electron beam melting process to fabricate the complicated shapes uh, it is very advantageous in uh, select laser melting process and even high density metallic implants scaffolds can be manufactured with uh, reduced the requirement of the post processing things and all and when you are talking about the disadvantages it's a, a slow part building rates and the cost of uh, process is expensive and the high laser power is required and difficult to remove unprocessed powder from the fabricated parts because some unsticked the unpartially melted powder will be sticked onto the part that uh, removing of that kind of the the unmelted powder particles from the part is uh, difficult because we need to go for some of the post processing things and all and with respect to the electron beam melting at manufacturing process uh, the geometric freedom for the designers is uh, more in the uh, electron beam melting process and it is uses a uh, minimal materials uh, like uh, the wastage of the materials is very very minimal when you compare with the select laser melting process and the uh, less tooling and setup cost and as well as and also the residual stresses uh, reduction due to increased uh, process temperature I means when you are talking about the slm process the residual stresses are more in the uh, part which are fabricated by the slm process but when you are talking about the electron beam because of the uh, vacuum the stresses generated in this part is very very minimal and also the oxidation reduction due to the vacuum environment because the oxidation will be very very less because of the vacuum environment conditions and all the other disadvantage with respect to this ebm process is the uh, it's a commercially available materials are very much limited because a lot of the uh, trial and testing are the addressing scenario in this ebm is very very minimal and also the surface finish which is similar to the sand casting means needs some full understanding to get the full benefits or advantages of this process and still a lot of research are uh, uh, required in this Uh, the ebm process to address the um, medical aspects medical parts which are fabricated by the cbm process and all you might have aware that the many researches are uh, made by this uh, select laser melting process if you see here how this select laser melting process works for example uh, the uh, the slm process uh, especially in the gr uh, slm systems they are used uh, medical parts which are slm solutions and that focus on this high productivity this all the injectors or the topological parts which are made by this uh, slm technology center you can see these are the benefits of uh, the slm fabrication to select laser melting machines which are uh, made use for the uh, real time application parts these are all the design aspects that can be printed and that can be monitored in the aspects how much uh, the uh, Uh, rate of fabrication process is there you can see how the uh, process fabrication is taking place in the slm process uh, the sintering and the melting and the uh, the grain safe and as well as the how much waste of the metal is taking place and what is the benefits and advantages of this slm process when you are taking about the uh, medical parts and if you see here uh, these are all the 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 success of this uh, slm parts or orthopedic implants are made by this uh, even this hip cups it is a very innovative complex uh, part geometry uh, even you can see the product we have 34 parts per 
15 hours of a time it can be built with and this is already fda approved parts uh, which are already implemented in some of the uh, patients you know, all over the even in us you know all over the world these are all hip cups are made with titanium metals and with a layer thickness of 50 microns they have made with this uh, this kind of uh, lattice structure yeah. okay. these are all the yeah. applications in the yeah. medical aspects and with respect to the uh, electron beam melting process if you see here how this electron beam melting process works this was working in the vacuum chamber and closed vacuum chamber it's having a to design and can be made any kind of lattice structures and uh, tightly stacked parts you can see how this electron beam process works if you see here in the rcam is the most leading manufacturer of this and also we have made so much of implants, the new implants of the RCAM. RCAM having a patent of this manufacturing this electron. You can see here how this uh, EVM process works and uh, and uh, some of the materials are prone to crack propagation and resources so that can be addressed with the EVM technologies and all. This is what we can, how the process works in the EVM. And uh, with respect to the uh, market scenario in this medical aspect, if you see the uh, scenario in the uh, market uh, scenarios, if you see these aspects of this uh, medical aspects or other aspects or automotive aerospace and consumer products, if you see here the market growth in the medical is uh, growing in uh, day by day and all, even with the, the market scenario from 2016 to 2021, is growing in medical aspects uh, around uh, every year 28 percentage growth rate is there in the medical aspect you see in the graph uh, this 2016 to 2028 this was the projected graph from the us healthcare rate manufacturing market size and if you see here the uh, what kind of process around this uh, seven or eight manufacturing process how we can use laser centering and as well as the electron beam melting these are all the most uh, suitable manufacturing process for metal IT manufacturing suitable for biomedical implants or biomedical parts see as the market size are growing from since uh, 2020 uh, the growth rate of laser sinting electron beam melting is uh, enormously growing when you are considering the us healthcare applications in the IT manufacturing of the metal processes and even if you see uh, what kind of materials and alloys which are used in the market size in the 2020. If you see here, the metals and alloys are around the 40 percentage and even the polymers, where the biodegradable polymers or biological cells are materials are used in the case of uh, around 60 to 70 percentage of the, such kind of materials in the global healthcare uh, applications in the IT manufacturing market size and all. <clears throat> this is what the uh, complex uh, the developments of this growth in the and medical aspects and all and these uh, materials are uh, growing because of the requirement uh, the emerging uh, trends in these markets this is due to their the implants or uh, surgical implants such as titanium stainless steel cobium cobalt all these are extensively used in the healthcare industry due to their various features like high strength weight ratio highly corrosion resistance and uh, very well uh, biocompatible the medical implants which are created by using the metal powder, cobalt, chromium, and highly compatible with the hard and very necessary for the long term performance. And in such applications, this is with respect to the US market, they are given a projection up to 2028. Even they are expecting the, the regional insights with respect to the growth rate around 35 percentage from this. Uh, large leading manufacturers of G 3D systems or statuses 
where all the most leading manufacturers of this medical uh, implants or application parts from this uh, the bio materials and all. Where all the key aspects of the market scenario in this uh, metal parts um, from these uh, various uh, markets uh, of the certain healthcare, global healthcare manufacturing systems, uh, GLTU 3D systems, or uh, Renisho or materialize or statuses. These are all the most leading manufacturers uh, when we expect this market size in this 2021, 1.61 billion was there. And then uh, the, when you are expecting projecting to the 2028, it should be around 6.44 billion USD was expecting. The growth rate is uh, from 21 to 28 is around 21 to 28 percent of growth rate they are expecting with respect to the medical aspects of this 3D printing parts now. This is what the developments is taking place in SLM process or in uh, the EBM process and all. When you are talking about the custom customization or patient-specific implants, the prosthesis implants can be made by nearly any unimaginable geometrical shape sizes through this uh, the translation of this X-ray, MRI, or CT scan data into the digital STL file three D printing process. As Professor Krishnan sir already discussed, how this uh, we are converting the CT scanning or MRI scanning data into the editable format in this mix software with the conversion of this STL file format that is can be used for printable formats. In this way, the 3D printing has becoming uh, the wide useful application in the healthcare sector to make the both standard and as well as the complex customized uh, prosthetic limbs, surgical implants, sometimes within a very short period of time, even 24 hours time, we can be able to manufacture such kind of the surgical implants or limbs, uh, prosthetic limbs and all. This approach has been used for uh, fabricate dental, spinal, and hip implants and all. When previously, before the implants could be used for clinically, they had to be validated, which is very uh, time consuming. Like uh, the time, sorry, it is time consuming and all. <clears throat> and if you see the uh, designing aspects, when you are taking the uh, data from the MRI or CT scanning data, you can see these kind of the, the CT scanning data are edited in the the magic or mimic software, the 3D modeling, and then the, the implementation of these environmental conditions, and then it is transforming into a, a manufacturing phase, and then it is uh, finally the implant uh, part is fabricated, then applied to the implant surgery in the fabrication and all. This is what the, the, the stages are the design process for the developments of implants taking place in the biomedical aspects from the a CT scan data to the final uh, the implant fabrication with the, the three printing process and all. And when you are talking about the commercial and clinical success rate of this customized implants and the prosthesis, as Reddy sir has uh, discussed in the today's morning session, the success rate with respect to the metal uh, implants in the India is very very less. But uh, when you talk about the US market. The almost all the many companies, as I told, the Stratasys, GE, and SLM Solutions, and even RCAM, already the parts are manufactured by this kind of the metal AM process, already FDA approved and already implemented into the patient for a particular patient with the specific requirements. And all. The research team at the uh, Biomed Research Institute, with this uh, Belgium Institute, uh, successfully implanted the first 3D printed titanium uh, mandibular process. And all. Even in 2013, the Axford performance material received the FDA approval for the 3D printed uh, polyether, the ketonectone, the skull implant, which was already successfully implanted in the uh, 2013 year. And that was layer by the manufacturer 3D printed titanium orthopedic, uh, the maxillofacial, uh, spinal, or uh, the dental implants. All these are already FDA approved. Uh, the implants are made by these various uh, the, the SLM or the <clears throat> port bed or EVM manufacturers of this metal printing machines. And even the any anatomical correction of this uh, 3D printed process is here capable of uh, detecting the uh, has been fabricated using the uh, silico or uh, chronodontic, uh, the silver nanoparticles are added into a particular uh, silicon gels that can be made with this 3D printing process years and all. Yeah, that can be made with the biocompatible biomaterials that is called uh, bioprinting and all. 
even the 3d printing has already had a transformative effect on this earring aids manufacturing today 99% of earring aids that fit into the ears are custom made using this 3d printing and all you can see some of the this kind of the 3d printing ear made with this uh, uh, the custom the commercial clinical success rate is there and even the bone plates the uh, failure plates or the dental implants where we need to have a vertebral or the the, uh, the jaws failure because of the trauma and all are some of the, the patient's specific parts very recently the the artificial eye the 3d printed eye is a, a true a biomimic and is a more realistic uh, uh, part prosthetic are uh, which are very a uh, clear uh, definition for the real depth to the pupil and all means the steve was a with uh, fitted with this kind of the 3d prosthetic eye and it was made by this the morefield eye hospital in english and all they have printed this kind of the artificial the true biomimic eye and it was already implemented in a patient specific <coughs> this is very recent development has taken place in these aspects of medical and the other anatomical models for the surgical preparations like uh, the individual variances and the complexities of the human body make the use of this 3d printed models ideal for uh, surgical applications or surgical preparations the mri or ct scans are not is uh, instructive since they are viewed in 2d uh, on a flat screen and uh, the use of 3d printed models for uh, surgical training is also preferable to, to train the uh, cadavers which uh, uh, present the problem with respect to the availability of uh, the cost and all in the manufacturing the 3d printing uh, the neuroanatomical models can be particularly helpful for the neurosurgeon by providing a representation of the some of the most complicated structures in the human body and all these uh, 3d printed models have been used in numerous cases like to gain the insights into the patient specific anatomy prior to the medical procedure for a particular patient so that will gives the most benefit advantages in the medical uh, aspects uh, and all when you uh, come across with the, some of the case studies the people have worked out with respect to the uh, bone or some of the knee implants or some of the other kind of the prosthesis and all to see the why the progress of this uh, the porous metal implants made by this slm or the ebm process and all why we need to have this porous the structures in the uh, implants are made by this uh, ebm or slm process because the structure of the bone tissue if you see here it is very highly porous and in some portion we need to have a the high density and in some portion we need to have a the porous structures that is where the compact bone and the spongy the these kind of the structures will be there in the human bone and all where we need to have the kind of the porous materials which are manufactured which is highly a uh, biocompatible and it should be very much uh, connection between this interface of this uh, the pore and as well as the structure implant with respect to the bone tissues those things are uh, required in the refabricated uh, parts and all and if you see the some of the the porous uh, the tubular cup the these kind of the implants are produced by this arkham technology they are having patent with these kind of the the ac cups uh, the company has illustrated the particular applications this uh, femoral bone uh, these kind of femoral bone or the tubular cup has failed this kind of implants are manufactured with titanium alloys and uh, <clears throat> the uh, titanium is uh, customized porous uh, implants uh, since the, the nominal skin bone having a modulus of elasticity between 1 to 7 gigapascal for the children and for the adults as well as and that kind of the modulus of elasticity is required when you are fabricating such kind of uh, the implants with the particular titanium materials and all and uh, this is what the uh, pre requisites or the guides or strategies to optimize for the implants fabrication when it is the uh, porosity is a, a cranial plate implant it's especially important in providing the bone cell in growth and as well as the fastening to the uh, skull and all that is what the major requirement of this uh, porous structures and uh, also the acrylate biomodel using this uh, the liquid resins and as well as the 
uh, what is uh, rapid uh, prototyping can be made with this kind of right manufacturing process and all with the help of this process you can see this uh, porous titanium uh, dental implants which are fabricated by this uh, slm process and ebm process and all. you can see these uh, 3d printed open cell structures of these uh, implants uh, even it may be dental implants or the spinal implants uh, why we are uh, taking about this is personalized implants and as well as the uh, cranium actual uh, reconstruction of the implants required for the particular patient that is the the spinal implants will be there the porous is required uh, and the porous surface cannot only provide the good environment for the bone in growth and as well as the decrease the elasticity of modulus difference between the implant and as well as the post bone but also it reduces the stress shielding effect meanwhile it is the a dense in the inner layer and can be satisfy the strength of the requirement which is the load bearing parts and as well as the connection between the stability requirement of the the implants and as well as the host bone and the annual at all and uh, 2019 they are from the FAU Germany have been successfully fabricated these kind of the uh, porous titanium uh, implants the prosthetic uh, dental implant these are having any a nearly equal to the bone elastic modulus and uh, which is close to the uh, human bone which is manufactured by this EBM S12 made with the RKM company in the Sweden and all uh, and also they have studied the different aspects with the porous titanium implants and as well as with the coated uh, the tantalum by the CVD process I mean, same kind of implant which is coated by the, the tantalum materials by the CVD process these uh, the very two important aspects are matching with the degree of mechanical properties between this implant and as well as the host bone it is where we need to address the ingrown growth conditions of the new bone and as well as the stability which is connecting between the implant and the host bone that is going to introduce the ability to introduce the new bone growth and as well as are dependent on the these two aspects and all. the institute of metal research uh, of chinese academy of science they have made uh, these kind of the studies which are fabricated by this uh, EVM process. Uh, this uh, they have uh, either uh, it is specific point, case specific uh, like uh, how we can address the compatibility of these porous materials. For example, the titanium which are made by only porous with the EVM process, which is going to give the excellent mechanical properties, performance, and uh, highly biological properties. The porosity, pore size dimension, and as well as the elastic models of the fabricated titanium implants are the seventy point five percentage, and as well as seven hundred plus or minus fifty microns of the pore size, and as well as giving a elastic models of nine point three gigapascal of elastic models, uh, and elastic models particularly satisfy the human cortical bone, which is the requirement of the particular patient specific and. Uh, the uh, compression strength and as well as the, where the uh, lower than that of the human cortical bone. If you see this uh, table, with respect to the particular material, the cortical bone, this is the requirement of this elastic model 7 to 30, and the compression should be 100 to 230 megapascal and yield strength of 50 to 150. But uh, when you are uh, porous titanium implants or porous tantalum implants made with this uh, the EVM process, having a the elastic modulus between uh, 11.3 gigapascal and uh, in the porous so tantalum implants uh, it is 1.5 to 3 gigapascal will be there and as also almost the compressive strength uh, 83.8 and uh, in the porous tantalum it will be around 35 to 55 where we need to have the uh, cancellous bone which can be used with the replacement of the tantalum implants and with the wherever the cortical bone that can be replaced with these kind of the porous titanium implants and all which are made by this uh, EVM process and all. And the uh, tantalum implants which are coated with this uh, tantalum, the titanium are coated with the tantalum. The Zimmer company having a patent and they have made with this uh, using a CVD process. And this was already uh, used in the particular patient's applications, uh, many uh, cases and all. And with respect to other custom built cranial or max facial implants, uh, which are surgical or preoperative models, and all. if you see this uh, uh, cranial uh, or the max facial implants are very much required in the nowadays from the various healthcare applications are uh, requiring these kind of the implants and all the total the orthopedic implants. These are all uh, the uh, 
FDA approved in the US, US market size and all. These were manufactured from SLM and as well as EPM process with the uh, titanium materials. Uh, for over uh, three decades, the acrylate biomaterials like the uh, liquid resins have been fabricated using these kind of the rapid prototyping process with the steel ethical based systems to create this uh, pre operative guides. Means we need to have, as Radisa discussed, pre operative guides are very much uh, required in medical aspects because. The experience doctor is different and the very new fresher uh, the surgeon is different. That's why the experience, the pre-operative guides are can be made with this kind of the painting process and all. These are uh, many millions of the knee and hip implant orthoplasticists annually around the world and all. The requirement are uh, growing every year. Uh, these are all the also similarly increasing the implant surgery for many other uh, front facial uh, cranial maxillofacial procedures and all. the cranial plates, inserts, or dental facial implants are the uh, deformities that as facial implants affect both in children and as well as in adults and all. Hence, the uh, design and the manufacturing of patient-specific customized implants are very much essential in the medical aspects. If you see this, uh, this is the pre-operative the skull, polymer skull, which is fitted with the titanium inserts. This is the porous titanium insert, and as well as with a, a titanium, uh, the porous structure, the mesh structure, which is uh, placed in the, the uh, spinal cage. In this, uh, uh, this is the polymer material, and this is the metal with the titanium, where we are using in the particular, uh, the ribs in the uh, spinal vertebrae and all. These particular applications need the, the initial, the preoperative guides and all that can be made with this kind of polymers and as well as the titanium materials and all before go to the, the particular operations and the other aspects are the hip implants the hip uh, arthroplasty means this is the uh, 3d printed hip art this is you can see a 3d this is the ct scan data mri scan data you can see this is the the cup which are made by this uh, ebm process the the femoral stem inserts uh, shown in this figure here this is the femoral stem shown inserted in the hip implant this is the article AC cup, the articular cup, and uh, this contains various uh, the porous and as well as open cellular structures along this even in the stem exterior because the bone growth or cell growth are very much required in this kind of the uh, kind of implant which are inserted into the particular patients and all. This is the long rods are implemented in the uh, several broken femoral bones and can also be benefit from the uh, porous and foam structure designs and all. There are commercial, uh, the manufacturers have also been providing a 3D printed uh, actuvalar cup uh, components nearly over uh, 10 years with the FDA approval and all. These kind of uh, the implants are uh, giving a lifespan of uh, 10 years uh, with respect to the particular patients and it is already uh, FDA approved in the US. The uh, many uh, ten of uh, thousands of have been surgically implanted in the, for the past decades in the worldwide with respect to the, these kind of uh, the arthroplasty hip implants and all and uh, even some of the <coughs> other uh, the uh, bone cell growth or other the cross linking or uh, wherever we require high molecular weight polyethylene sometimes it is uh, coated with the uh, lubriscal like layer of this other polymeric materials in this uh, kind of this uh, the hip uh, the femoral stem and all because to enhance the biocompatibility uh, the, as well as it mimics the articular uh, cartilage and can eliminate the uh, wear by the factor of uh, 103 and all. These kind of things uh, can be uh, made with this uh, uh, 3D printing process and all. Because the total hip implants uh, experiences a complex variation with respect to the, the multiple stress models. And it is often the cyclic and as well as high fatigue stresses especially when we are uh, talking about the wide patients uh, they are having different weight body ratios will be there and the motion mechanisms will be there and it is very personalized that's why where uh, 3d uh, patient specific fabrication is required for a particular useful and uh, during the optimum mechanical compatibility design and as well as uh, uh, the with respect to including the uh, instrument fabrication in the hospital and the point care taken within the 3D printing centers and all as well as uh, surgical service centers and all. 
the uh, all this uh, the total uh, knee arthroplasty and as well as open cellular implant components you see this is the uh, chromium cobalt which are manufactured by EBM uh, process the femoral mesh this is a porous structure and this is the uh, the total knee arthroplasty this is the uh, model view of this uh, knee replacement uh, arthroplasty involving this uh, spatial as well as the porous femoral long stem uh, with a chromium cobalt molybdenum alloy appliances and as well as a long stem which is made by this uh, titanium tubular appliances center. This is the tubular appliances are made with this titanium material center. This is uh, where we highly cross linking of uh, uh, these kind of inserts are required in the uh, tibial table. That is, uh, in this, uh, both the femoral and uh, tibial components have a, a porous bone stems and uh, facilitate for the implant placement and as well as fixation and all. And this is having a open cellular features, which is strengthened by this uh, solid and as well as internal stem rods. This is uh, included in the, the foam models and as well as variations in the structures where it is manufactured by this uh, chromium cobalt molybdenum uh, knee implants. Uh, it's a commercially uh, biomedical devices manufactured from the uh, routine process with uh, 3D printing of uh, very, very advantageous and very beneficial when you are taking considering of these kind of very compatible materials with respect to the ease hipping uh, implants using this uh, ESTM F75 standards with the uh, FDA approval with the uh, coarse hipping treatments and all. that is with the uh, 1200 degree centigrade uh, hipping can be done with uh, the four hours duration with a 0.1 gigapascal of argon pressure uh, that is where the requirement of these properties the mechanical properties the porous properties are required with the hard isostatic pressing that can be uh, gained with the help of the CSTM uh, standard analysis uh, requirement for the the FDA approval for the particular patient uh, specific center. This kind of hip treatment produces very uh, relatively equi-axed grains and as well as the, the structure which is often highly dense and as well as uh, uh, stacking the fault of this uh, chromium cobalt grain matrix and all. This is where we require these kind of microstructures and as well as the micro between the uh, 3.2 to 3.6 gigapascal. These kind of the requirement mechanical properties should be there in the a particular <clears throat> knee implant that can be achieved by the fabrication with the EVM process and as well as post processing with the hard isostatic setting uh, pressing uh, because when we are inserting these kind of uh, things this is going to if you see the analysis of this uh, cross section the the, you know, the part which are manufactured by EVM chromium cobalt material and then if you are observed with the optical microscopic this uh, the composite of this uh, bone and as well as the implant the EBM fabricated solid chromium cobalt molybdenum alloy rod and this uh, directional in this figure. And the carbide uh, precipitates column are corresponding to the multiple dimensions and all. This is what uh, the uh, obtained in the uh, heap stacked uh, the microstructural options of this uh, carbide and all. And uh, uh, very recently, uh, some of the other researchers have studied this kind of the, the porous uh, pelvic uh, the heater. This is the customized manufacturing uh, uh, patient specific uh, polymer TCAD model was uh, made with this uh, EBM process. And this is the porous titanium uh, pelvic inserts. Uh, and this is where the RR source is indicating the attachment of the articular cup. Means that kind of articular cup is attached with respect to this uh, uh, pelvis, uh, which is connecting to the uh, right or left leg of the patient. This is where we need, uh, if it is in the left hand, uh, the articular cup, this kind of the T model which is fabricated and the porous uh, polluted is made with this EVM process and all. This is where uh, we need uh, uh, the market scenario with respect to the particular uh, titanium components in the 3D powder bed fusion fabrication process uh, that can be used for the particular applications and all. And with respect to other kind of uh, case studies, uh, what we are discussing here, the, some of the, the plates, the bone plates, which are made by this SLM process. You can see these kind of uh, bone plates of uh, 70 mm length with the width of 17.5 mm, with a thickness of 3 mm, with a different uh, old radius of 3.2.8 mm. These kind of bone plates are made by this uh, the SLM process with a titanium material center. Especially designed uh, and uh, 
and a repeated cyclic heating and cooling taking place to produce the beta transfers uh, microstructural uh, circular microstructure in the fabricated titanium materials and that and we having a uh, improved uh, ductility properties by the heat process with uh, uh, this kind of uh, plates and that. and with respect to other uh, case studies uh, uh, over 68 years of uh, the old uh, the patient like the new patients which is uh, at a with a, some the diseases with uh, like kind of lens and these uh, implants are maxilla and the uh, six implants in the mandible was uh, rehabilitated this maxillary framework of this the dp uh, as well as made with this cobalt using slm and as well as for the mandibular titanium framework was fabricated using this electron melting process and as well as this AM technologies like SLM, EBM were recognized as a viable option to conventional methods like casting for the implants grown uh, FDPs and as well as would, uh, eliminate the odorous works uh, dental technicians and all. That is what uh, these kind of the <coughs> bone fixed dental processes can be made with this uh, the EBM and SLM techniques and all. These kind of the implants which are scanned data with the CT scanning and X-ray MRI scanning then it was manufactured and then this is the part the implant processes are fabricated by the EVM process and after the implantation into the particular patient specific and after over a period of time has taken how much it is the biocompatible over a week after the fixation of this uh, processes with the particular patient. So, and the other kind of the uh, case studies that is with respect to the 3D printed uh, titanium processes in the limb slave surgery. That is, so three patients they have taken uh, with the uh, clavial uh, sarcoma, this kind of a cancer disease. Uh, the scapular ES with respect to the uh, sarcoma and uh, the pelvic uh, candosoma, these were uh, scanned with the computer tomography and all. Uh, the porous, uh, the Prosthesis was manufactured by this EVM techniques according to the uh, following procedures with respect to patients. One is a 21 year old woman presented with the six months history of gradually increasing in the swelling and the clavicle. And that is uh, taken from this uh, the MRI data and uh, this kind of uh, the growth is taking place. This is was uh, removed, this kind of the uh, cancers uh, addressing the issues with the 3D tumor models. That is uh, after uh, removing this, uh, and then we are taking the data with the editing with the mimic software, and then uh, these kind of uh, the processes, 3D models, and uh, the overlap of these tumors. <coughs> Final reconstruction was generated using this uh, uh, 3D surgical planning, and, uh, and these uh, the kind of the uh, patient's case with, uh, are edited. And this is how the kind of parts are fabricated by 3D printing and just adapted where the uh, tumor is uh, there that is removed from the patients and which was implemented with this kind of titanium materials which are fabricated by this the EVM process. You can see this is with respect to the uh, patient specific was manufactured with the EVM process and uh, implanted into the uh, the whole clavicle was performed using this uh, tumor free margin and all. It has a porous structures with a reduced modulus and all. This is kind of the uh, plates are implanted into the particular patients where they are having uh, the kind of tumors that can be removed and implanted in these kind of things. And with respect to the patient to over 35 years old diagnosed with the right uh, scapular ES after the core needle biopsy and all. Uh, the radiography showed this an osteolytic region with a bulky soft tissue with a shadow and all. Uh, these, uh, the moth eaten or the mottled appearance of this bone restriction was observed in this 3D uh, CT scan construction and all. Then it was manufactured with this uh, 3D printing EBM process and this kind of the, the imaging data was taken uh, with the, this kind of tumor was removed and the uh, prosthesis view was fabricated in the design model the mimics and then it is matched with the particular patient specific the data and all then it was fabricated by this uh, manufactured by the cvm process and then after the uh, the proper articulation after this 21 month uh, month of uh, prosperity then it is implemented in the particular patient specific this is how we can use this medical uh, the 3d printing the slm and EBM process for a particular patient specific and all 
and with respect to the patient, he is a 56-year-old woman having a, a gradual enlargement of uh, the pelvic mass of the uh, five months. Then the uh, plain radiographic has shown this uh, the this kind of uh, diseases that was uh, the uh, taken from the CD scanning data and then it was uh, implemented was manufactured by this EBM. This is how this kind of the the part fixation stable with a, a good alignment uh, even after 18 months this uh, CT scanning data gives us this kind of uh, information. This is what uh, made with this uh, titanium with the EBM process now. And uh, by after analyzing by giving this uh, summary of this overview of this uh, the metal 3D printing with respect to healthcare application, there is a, a progressive and uh, continuing the use of this uh, titanium for a broad variety of implants such as those illustrated what we are examples are case studies uh, for 18 uh, continues to be uh, azure optimum biocompatible and safety even in post surgical quality of the life indeed although there are have been some instances like uh, titanium and vanadium toxicity uh, there is a recent research uh, conclude that the issue are very very rare in particular patients and that's why the considerable research on this developments of wide range of titanium alloy systems have been conducted over the past two to two decades, like including the alloys such as uh, titanium uh, zirconium alloy or uh, the ink small of less than the half of the uh, titanium uh, 64 alloy. There is a little incentive either the biomedical or economical to adopt these kind of alloys for a, uh, implant fabrications and all. And also with respect to the uh, customized or patient specific implant fabrication, uh, continues to be a, a proliferate and the commercial biomedical devices companies are also incorporating the uh, powder bed fusion technologies into their manufacturing arena allowing the cost reduction for range of standard orthopedic and related appliances especially using titanium powders which are increasingly available uh, worldwide and all. even the metallurgical issues are now well established in uh, titanium uh, biomedical devices processing with the uh, evm or slm process uh, the performance and the lot of continuing research and development for the customized process with the following uh, mutations of the surgeries and uh, other the exoskeletal reconstruction is especially uh, promising in the medical applications of this titanium materials. And with respect to the conclusions of this metal 3D printing in the biomedical applications, like uh, if you see the benefits of this 3D printing in medical applications is very highly beneficial. And uh, as well as uh, the, the customization and the personalization are uh, more efficient in the case of this printing with respect to medical applications and increased cost efficiency. The uh, cost of manufacturing in this process is very, very uh, cost efficient and the enhanced productivity and as well as the, the democratization and the collaboration with respect to this 3D printing with the MRS scan data and all. And the 3D printing has become more potential to a number of uh, different fields, including medicine and all. And the medical advances that have been made using this 3D printing are already significant and exciting. But some of the revolutionary applications, such as like what we are talking about, the bioprinting, the organs printing is uh, needed some time to evolve to address uh, such type of the artificial uh, bones or artificial organs need to be uh, manufactured with this uh, bioprinting or code printing process. And all. This is uh, some of the challenges are still uh, existing that need to be addressed over a period of time and all. The barriers and the controversies with respect to this uh, printing process, this is some of the unrealistic expectations and as well as hype. Because despite the even the many potential advantages that 3D printing may provide, exceptions of this technology are often exaggerated by the media or government and even in research aspects and the other is uh, the safety and security issues because the read building has given a rise with the safety and security issues that merit the serious concern the 3d printers have already been employed in the criminal purposes like, uh, like such as the printing illegal items like the guns or some of the gun magazines or master keys or the ATM skimmers and all that the safety and security issues also there and the other and patent and the corporate concerns like manufacturing applications of 3D printing have been subjected to patent the industrial design copyright and as well as trademark law for the decades and all. 
which are all the some of the uh, barriers and the controversies with respect to 3d printing process and all and i'm acknowledging the some of the case studies uh, i have discussed from these authors very recently published in 2020 and 2021 uh, the practicality and the applications they have developed and implemented with respect to the limb slave surgery or some of the bone deficiency patients and these are also some of the references i have taken to uh, prepare my slides uh, thank you thank you thank you very much if you have any uh, queries or doubts so i'm happy to uh, clarify or try to address your and doubts uh, with respect to things yeah any doubts from the participants any clarifications uh, how important uh, the snap to stl file is it with respect to uh, this session or you are asking about some of the assignment uh, problems uh, excuse me good afternoon sir yeah good afternoon uh sir there is a small doubt uh yeah. sir when we uh sir can we open the slide where you were exploring about the hip once yeah is it visible no sir uh, yes sir so yeah. not uh, the pro the complete hip ones are we have been sorry your voice is breaking uh sir over here sir so sir if we are looking over here implantation of the complete hip yeah not the complete hip Yeah. So this is only the articular cup, and uh, some cases they have made this femoral bone also that the knee implant was placed on particular patients and also. Uh, actually, for over here we are making a uh, cup now, sir. But yeah. in the other of the complete hip, yeah, uh, where we have made an implant. So how the bone will get the source of energy or the blood from that implant, sir? you are asking about regarding the blood vessels not regarding blood vessels sir uh, can you just forward some slides sir where you have shown about the hip uh, implantation this one uh, no sir M more forward sir I think uh... Yeah, tell me your query. I, I, okay. Do you know the slide number? No, sir. But it's okay, sir. I will yeah. let me. So, if you are looking over here, we are having yeah. a implantation of some ball. Yeah. Yeah. So from that head, so we are right now we are creating a completely a metal three D printed implant, no, sir. Yes. So how are we gonna get the power source to this uh, bone, sir? Like how what are the sources that we are able to get? Because it's completely closed one. Yeah, actually it is transferred from this this bone, na uh, femoral bone, and this yes. hip is holding and it is performing the particular function. When the joint uh, your leg is moving, it needs to be rotated to do the particular function and all. Uh, that is the the load carrying capacity is taken place from this uh, the uh, the articular cup and also when uh, the cell growth or the the bone growth is taking place that's why it is made with the particular porous structures and all is it fine yes sir thank you so okay any other queries
yeah participants if you have any queries you can put it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself yeah, anything any doubts with respect to the biomaterials which are manufactured with the rebuilding process to the slm and as well as the the EBM process and all. Okay. Yeah, if there are no queries, uh, no doubts, I uh, would like to end the session here and uh, we'll come back at uh, uh, 3 o'clock for the afternoon, the uh, lab session.